Hi, it's Alexa. This is 52 Weeks of Design Live. And I'm just inviting Jean Liu. My dear friend. Yay! Hi. 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 Oh, I know exactly. You know, you are, right? You sitting. I have a piece yes. of that right across from me. Oh, it's so, it's so good. I want um, more. So this was actually, um, this is Celia's work and it was done for Show House. I loved it so much. I brought it back into my own office. So we have so much in common. We do. <laughs> we the good do. and the bad stuff, right? <laughs> um, I can't believe I'm getting to see you twice in two weeks. I know. What are the chances? But I'm always happy to see you. And I hope I, I hope you recognize me this time. You said I look so different each time you see me. You're, you have a different hair lengths. Well, you are also yeah. surrounded by a million people. Um, so I like I need to keep up to date with your hair length. I'll, length. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know every time I go and get it cut. OK, good. Okay. Good. It'll <laughs> give me an excuse to talk to you. Yes. So you have such an interesting story. You are, it's like, it, it's a real story. It's, it's ingenious, it's entrepreneurship, it's cool about your family, all of it is great. So start from the Thank beginning. Thank you. Baby Lou. <laughs> Baby Lou. Baby Lou was born in um, the suburb of Dallas, um, only Asian kid in a very white um, Christian school so definitely grew up knowing not hard at all not hard at all knowing feeling very different from my peers um i ended up moving to california with my mother when i was 10. unfortunately my dad died in a car accident but he did manage to start what ended up becoming um quite a large family business so in the meantime this business was being run by a family member i consider myself a Californian um, because I don't remember too much from living here in Dallas. But yeah. by the time I'd gotten out of grad school, it I got explains, a It explains the lack of an accent too. Uh, that is probably correct, yes. <laughs> um, the, I got a phone call coming out of grad school and from a family member, she was an aunt and she'd been in charge of this family business this whole time. And she said, I think you need to come back and figure out what you wanna do with this. I'm pretty much retiring and um, this was your father's and come figure it out. And now, your father, your father had um, gotten involved with the company in a very cool, scrappy way. Right? Yes. So indeed, um, mm -hmm. my dad was sort of a contrarian of the earliest variety. Um, he came home and he was an engineer for Mercedes-Benz. My mother was six months pregnant with my sister, so the story goes. And he announces, hey, I quit my job. You know, most families talk about it and make decisions together. That was not my dad's way. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he had some friends who were um, trying to buy some ceiling fans and asked him to go place the order. Back then, the best ceiling fans were actually coming out of Taiwan. Um, his friends knew that he could speak the language, could. Um, was going to go home to visit his family. So he places the order. He gets the fans brought here to the United States. And I guess this venture of his friends did not end up going as intended. So the legend, because it has been that long, it is now folklore, um, goes that they, the friends come back to my father and said, you know what? We actually want out of this business. Do you want to just take us out of our stock? He goes, sure. So he ends up selling the rest of these fans and I think from there really turns it into a career. And I would say within um, two, three years, um, he's now manufacturing, distributing to uh, big box retailers like Walmart. So they were one of the earlier um, customers. And I would say the rest is history. We've certainly grown since then. Um, if it's not too early to dive into it, because I'm so excited about it. You know, we have made acquisitions along the way. One of them was outdoor furniture company called Woodard, which you all know. And, you know, Woodard is near and dear to my heart. It's an American brand. It's the oldest outdoor furniture company that remains in the United States. Um, 
it definitely has been a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to try and um, get Woodard to where, in my mind, it ought to be. And so we get to work with wonderful and illustrious people like yourself, and we're going to launch this collaboration. So illustrious. So illustrious. You know, you are design royalty. I have to work that into every conversation. <laughs> so, uh, Decorating princess. Decorating um, princess. So. so when you were at Harvard, and where else did you go? Georgetown. Georgetown. Oh, yeah. Well, how could I forget that? You yep. um, What were you studying then? I was a foreign service major at Georgetown. I thought I was going to do something in the field of international politics. Everyone thought I was going to law school. Um, I actually really became enamored with how religion affected policy and got persuaded by my mentor um, at Georgetown, Father Walsh, if any of you guys are listening and happen to know him, he was truly a legend, um, talked me into taking two more years of theology and suggested that I might apply to this little known place called Harvard. <laughs> I laughed when he said I should do it. So I did apply and I, you know, got in and I got there. It was two years. It was nothing I had expected. It was um, rather difficult. I do think that it is true. They are quite brainy in that little town of Cambridge. You've good. heard, right? And the yeah. weather's so bad, all, the, all, you, all you can do is study. So. <laughs> I'm but, sure you could do a couple more things, but okay. You know, it wasn't really what I expected. And I started becoming more and more concerned about what my future looked like after delaying the real world for two more years. So and that was when I got the call about coming back home, checking out the family business, figuring out what I was going to do with it. And so I said, fine, out of family obligation, I would come back for just one so, year. So what did you think you were going to do? I actually had... Gotten that far? <laughs> I had a job offer to go work for an investment bank in San Francisco, which was ironic because that was what all of my peers were doing out of college. And two years prior, I had decided I was too cool and too good to just sell my soul out like that. And so to, to be in that same spot two years after grad school or into grad school was sort of, uh, I wasn't super excited about that. So and obviously the universe had different plans for you. Yes. So, just, and where, where is, how many siblings do you have? Just your sister? I have the sis yes. The younger sister. Oh, like you. Younger sister. No, I have an older sister. Yeah. She's older. Okay. Got it. Um, so, okay, because my, yeah, my next question was, why did you get the call? Because I'm, um, I'm the old, eldest. I just yeah. put it together. In my head. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay, so you were going to go for a year. What did you think you were going to do in that year? Just pull stuff together, get a, a uh, like, were you going to hire somebody else? Like, well, yeah, I thought I was going to come, maybe just survey the business, figure out who could run it in the meantime. And I honestly still feel like that would have been the plan. However, within six months of moving to Dallas, I met my um, husband who, you've probably heard this before, I kid you not, seventh generation Texan. So you don't, those guys don't leave without well, being... Really steer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you can't make it that far and then just, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Um, and, and presumably you're at, you had a whole wing of family in Texas. I have aunts and uncles. I don't honestly see them that often. Everyone's kind of busy doing their own thing. But, you know, the family business had been fairly contentious, you know, who was involved, who got credit for what. So, you know, it had become pretty much a solo venture by the time I arrived. And it's very much how it remains today. <laughs> so. And so you go in, you, I mean, this is, it's so, it's so complicated. It is very complicated. So, you know, with the family business. No, no, I, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about this big company that has all of these parts and what you, you know, like fixing up this, I don't know if I, it's fair to say fixing up the structure, but dealing with it, 
figuring out where you are in the ecosystem. Um, I think you sold off some of the parts of the business. Is that, isn't that right? Or have that? We actually never sold off any parts of the business. What we have done is continue to acquire companies that ultimately get folded um, under, under the same umbrella of brands. And then in the midst of that effort, and what year is that? We've made acquisitions fairly consistently from 2001 up until today. So, um, and 2001, it's interesting, like that is just when the, um, I mean, brand was not the word on everybody's tongue. No, right? not at all. Not at all. Um, so you are, you are figuring that out in real time. Yes. And, and then in 2006, you're like, I'm not busy enough. <laughs> I needed an outlet is what I needed. So, um, so I, you know, step. how do you get, how do you get to the next step? I got talked into making a very responsible decision, which was to stop being a renter and to become a homeowner. Mm -hmm. So I bought my first house and I thought, but I'm not going to live here forever. But it was, we did the math and I could even, I could be fine if I wanted to rent it out and have it become a rental property. And I actually found it incredibly refreshing to go and work on this house at the end of every workday. So my contractor was wonderful. He was very involved. Every, he did everything he said he was going to do. Nothing like the horror stories that you know. Yeah, you I was hear. like, those are four words in a specific order that I'm not yes. used to. Exactly. doesn't exist anymore. What's wonderful. I mean, yeah. I had that experience, but yeah, it's not, you don't hear it a lot. So that's a great thing to hear. So we ended up flipping four more homes after we got done with mine. And you know what I loved about this particular contractor? Because raising homes in Dallas is such a predominant trend. This was somebody who had grown up on the East Coast, also came back to Dallas. And so he had a real love for architectural and historical homes. So our whole, our whole deal was to go and find homes that could be renovated and restored. And that was what he loved. It was what I loved. So we went and did that. And then the last house we did was probably the biggest project. I mean, I'm 20 something years old. I'm dealing with a four to 5,000 square foot house. It's more money than I've ever spent on any single thing. And at that time, the economy was starting to turn and, you know, selling a million dollar house, at least in Dallas at the time, was a little tricky. So I started doing some of the window treatments and some of the cushions in this window bench and started doing the soft touches. And I had a contract in my hands, I would say, within one week after doing that. So you so. saw the power. You had the vision and then you yeah. reached um, and at the same time, I was, I had become friends with someone who was an interior designer who, you know, was very gracious and let me kind of tag along and see what the inside of that business looked like. Yeah, my next and, question, how did you even know who to call to make those things? So I, you had I a... found all of the sources, um, you know, in hindsight, was it a good upholster? Did, were these window treatments really that good? I, I don't think so. But um, we got it done and a friend of mine came to see the house right before. Can you hear me? I can. So a uh, friend came over and said, do mind. I, you know, this was sort of a sad situation too. She was getting a divorce. They couldn't afford, she couldn't afford to move out of her. Um, condo. So she said, will you please come and help me work on this space? I don't want it to remind me of him. I said, sure, I'm not taking any money. She goes, I have to pay you. Otherwise, you're not doing it. I quoted her some really ridiculously low fee. Yeah, yeah. By the time it was done, I had two more inquiries. And, you know, that business training was telling me, hey, I think I need to pay my taxes. I think I need to, I need to do something a little bit more formal than here's a check. Oh, thanks for the money. Here's, you know, so it's theoretically.
Can you hear me? Yeah, you you paused again. So but you were doing all of this while you had a full time job. Yes. I mean, I'm what like if you are such a chill personality, but you are constantly doing a million things. Um, you, you read my questionnaire, right? Yeah. You know, people think I'm calm and laid back, but I'm really not. If you work with me, you know. I, I, I'm not sure I believe you. Oh, well, then we need to hang out more. <laughs> I think you're yeah. alive. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm always moving and doing something, but and inside it's every day is like, ah, but we get it done. And, uh, yeah. I mean, that's just a lot of, those are a lot of different skill sets. Um, I would assume or hope that you are so happy. I mean, you, your work is phenomenal. Um, everybody should follow you who, who doesn't already. And I thank you. Your work in house beautiful and everywhere. Um, clearly you found your calling. Does, are you, does it just make you so happy that you, you ended up in this weird circuitous path that led you here? Most days I'm quite happy. I mean, I think you can, you understand just how hard the ins and outs of our jobs have been the last two years, but I will say I do still continue to feel an incredible sense of reward when we can help clients finish a room, finish a house. That that has never um, waned, and so I think that what that's what really makes me um, continually dedicated to this field and industry. So when did you when did you like get your staff? Like what? How did what was that? What did that process look like? Um, I've seen. <laughs> is, I mean, you are not kidding around. <laughs> Thank you. I probably went solo at it for two to three years. And, you know, I'm not that great at math, much to my parents' dismay. And when it was taking me two days, two solid days to send my own invoices out, I said, this has got to stop. So I started asking for help. First, it was a contract person that would meet me at Starbucks every weekend to help me generate the invoice. We'd hand them off back to each other. And then I realized I needed even more help. So I hired a, a designer through um, several recommendations and referrals. And she's still with me today. I jokingly tell people Lisa is the other half of my brain. And, you know, slowly we went from one to two to I think there's six people in my studio now. It's like a circus. <laughs> and you have a beautiful studio. Oh, and thank you. I don't know if you're still planning on doing it, but going to have a coffee shop in the front. Yes, it is something that we continue to talk about, um, the pros and cons of having a, um, a coffee shop for to help. It's really a nonprofit-based idea, um, wanting to employ... Uh, adults with special needs. That was really the idea. So if I can never get past the city of Dallas's very stringent inspection, um, or I should say inspectors, then yes, that will happen. And where did that idea come from? You know, when you came to visit me, you saw the neighborhood where we are, and it's the design district. It's actually not that easy to get coffee anywhere. So it was really I just want coffee. I want to not have to go and have a bad parking situation, traffic situation to get coffee once we're down here. Mm -hmm. And and then I really love this concept in Dallas called La La Land, and it is a coffee shop that employs foster children. And so we had kind of flirted with the idea of asking them if they wanted to come and take over the space. And somebody said, hey, you know, I've got a niece who's autistic and you know, we're always trying to find work that's meaningful for her to do. What if we try to do this? And so that's really where the idea was born. And, you know, this is still something we hope one day we can um, actually realize. It's, I mean, it's a, such a beautiful idea. And it's also the notion of being 
um, doing good for the community right there in your own workspace is absolutely. Very, um, it's very impressive to me because uh, philanthropy can be very distant, and the idea of just doing what you want for your community, for other people, right there in your own office space is just like, I just, it's impressive and it's great. And I don't want people to do that. I mean, you, you need to have an office building and a coffee shop, but like, maybe the money to finish it out. Yeah. <laughs> details, details. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um, so you are, you know, you have a lot of these community relationships, um, at least to my to my eye. Um, and recently, you were here with uh, at the D and D building, giving a great panel discussion. Thank you. The AAP ID Design Office. Uh, I think I a vowel there. Um, so tell me a little bit about that. Obviously, I was at the panel discussion, and it was really. Yeah. Um, go and then I'll tell you some of the things I thought. Sure. Um, thank you so much for coming and supporting us. You know, this had really been an idea between a couple of designers, Jessica Davis and um, I think Joanne, uh, who is also of Dowell Furniture and Young Ha, who you and I both know and love. And it was really amidst, I think, the Asian hate crimes last year about talking about, well, why don't we have a forum to come and really just bounce ideas off of each other, be honest and talk about some of the challenges that we might face as Asian Americans working and living in the United States today. But for me, it was really wanting to try and highlight all of the wonderful work that's being done by designers, Asian designers, makers, um, mm -hmm. and I've said this multiple times, I still really mean it. These guys have all been around. I just don't think that they're getting the kind of representation, the kind of visibility that um, yeah. they should Design be getting. Yeah, Design Royalty gets. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, not all of us can be Design Royalty. There's, so. there's room yeah. and space to be shared and yeah. also connections to be made. Um, makers of all sorts. Yes. Um, we all, the, on the decorator and need to know where to find them. You know, who doesn't want more resources, wonderful talents that are out there that perhaps we don't know about for the reasons you, you just said. Like, um, you know, we can't feed the machine of creativity without these resources. Right. So, you know, that was, a, from there we got together, the group expanded. You know, we are now, we have several founding members and really the panel that you attended at the D&D building, thank you, Schumacher, um, was our kickoff, our launch event. And, you know, people asked us, what, what are the next steps? Um, we do have some ideas, but we are also very open and honest about wanting to know what people want to see from us, what, is, what would be useful um, going forward as well. Um, and Young was saying something interesting about, you know, identification of self and things happen to you and you wonder, is it because I'm Asian? Is it because I'm woman, a woman? Is it because I'm da, 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 da. like we, um, you know, all of us have, have, you know, who, who we're identifying as and trying to like pick our way through the path of what, sure. of whatever that all brings to us. So I imagine there's just a point where you, where the group of you guys were sitting down and saying, you know, um, for our community, this conversation, these conversations have to be had publicly. Yes, we want to continue that dialogue. We don't want, um, we want it to be, at least I do, I want it to be a very safe space where we can really talk about difficult issues. You know, people look at us and go, well, why don't you tell us what's right or wrong? I really don't have some of the answers. I think one of the things that, I touched on in the panel that remains um, unclear to me is when is something cultural appropriation? When is it cultural appreciation? You know, Chinoiserie is a wonderful and a big part of design, but I think I think it deserves a little bit more thought and intent on how it's being used. Um, and I think 
I would be asking interior designers to really think through that before they just go, oh, wouldn't the chinoiserie panel look great here? Well, what is on that chinoiserie panel? How did that panel get there? Um, what is the, how, you know, what, what is the genesis of that? How so. can you celebrate it and not yeah. just be a user? Exactly. It is actually interesting, gosh, that like our whole lives now we're users because of tech. We um, are. And it's, it's not a beautiful word to be a user. No. So we could be admirers, you know, yeah. is a form of being a user, so. Yeah, there's got to, we've got to come up with a better word for that. Um, so when you were talking about that, obviously as a uh, middle-class white woman, I'm, I'm, you know, constantly thinking, what, am, you know, am I celebrating? Am I celebrating about various things? Um, and what I came out of the panel thinking was it, what you just said, that if, if there's no story and no explanation and, you know, really no, no story, no connection right. to the whatever, then, then it's just use like a Kleenex, you know, yes. just like one and done, and just like, um, yeah, in, in, without value. Um, I mean, I, I think that you know, with use comes this implied, this unspoken implication that you actually like what you're seeing, right? Otherwise, why use it? Um, I think we just, I for myself at least want to be really cognizant about how it's being used. Is it being used in a respectful way? Have I done the homework surrounding it to make sure that I'm actually not offending anybody when I choose to use it? Um, I think these it's are the questions. And offending not like, you know, you we all speak to people who are like, oh, you know, everything's so PC. Um, like, is it really necessary to make, like ever to make people feel bad if you can avoid it? Right. I mean, so and I and I, I have I, um, gave a quote to apartment therapy recently. You know, I said, I think intention really matters. And I think it's this it's about your own conscience. Nobody's policing your intention. You know, do you have a clear conscience about how you're using it, why you're using it? And okay. I think that re that's really what it boils down to for me, at least. Yeah. And that's a very academic. Too. It just, it's like, no, know your business. Yeah, know your business. You, whether it's um, cultural or, or like, it's also good just professionally in a medium that is so visual. Yes. Uh, to, to be able to articulate and appreciate and understand and explain what you're doing and why. And you can't, right. you don't know. Right. No. Uh, so what are you doing and why <laughs> right now? Um, you you've been doing uh, restaurants as well as private houses like yeah. what what do you have the most fun doing right now i have to say for our studio finishing up our first restaurant was a huge um thrill and relief we at times wondered if we'd ever see the day where the restaurant would open i'm sure my client asked the same question <laughs> um I think we really love this idea of working in the hospitality space because I said this um, recently, you know, when you work on a space like that, you have an opportunity to really push the bounds of creativity because you're asking people to spend, if it's a restaurant, a few hours there, if it's a hotel, maybe, you know, a couple of days, maybe a week there. You, you don't have to make the same kind of practical decisions per se from a design standpoint that you might in a home. Um, you know, people don't necessarily want to live in the space that, um, or have a space that they live in full time, look and give you a certain feeling as a restaurant. So we love that idea. And you I think that appetite for it. Oh. Yes. <laughs> See, you're so good. Punster. Um, I think also we love the idea of serving more than just a single family. I think the idea that, you know, we could have uh, made dining, you know, a little bit more elevated or a little bit more memorable to a large, larger group of people is inspiring too for us. So, mm -hmm. um, and then we do have the residential projects that we um, 
are really is really our bread and butter when we very much still love doing that it's really the clients that we forge relationships and bonds with that make it really um special so yeah i mean i want to come and work for you oh uh, <laughs> forge those bonds with you um who who you know you're modernist you're sleek but it's all thoughtful it all feels very educated um who inspires you or who has inspired you in the, in design like who do you look to i mean i think i'm somebody that has several different personalities that are always in you know rolling around i i love designers from um thomas o'brien to your work obviously um Ob i'm a big um, I, I think it really is about what time, you know, where I am, what space it is, um, understanding the architecture that goes alongside what's trying to be accomplished inside, um, in, inside the home. And, you know, I love, I don't know, all kinds of designers too. Um, I told you, I think Vincent Van Dusen could do my Hamptons home one day, right? And you would do my Central Park apartment, I mean, or my Park Avenue. Space. <laughs> Uh, I'll do your lean-to. I'll do anything. Oh, okay. These lean-tos in Texas get real fancy. <laughs> she shed. I love a she shed. I don't know where this term came from, but I'm totally fine with it. Have so, you done a she shed? <laughs> I mean, it's just an oasis, right? An right. Brown, which I like the idea. Um, what was that? Okay, so... You and I are collaborating right now. Yes. We, when did we have our first call? It was during the pandemic, I want to say. Maybe before then? No, I, I was sitting on the sofa in Southampton. So it must have been during the pandemic. But yes. It was days, right? 2020? Yes. Um, but it was, yeah, I think it, I think Like for Hopefully, okay, I turn that alarm off. Um, so, I think when we first started talking, first of all, it was very exciting because the full horror of the pandemic had not really sunk in yet. But also, right. for me, working with you to come out with a line for Woodard Outdoor Furniture was, um, you know, you're a woman in business this was your company it has been around for a long time you are trying to stay true to it but bring it forward yes. too. you know we had all of these wonderful um serendipitous things happening and um yeah, absolutely and you really have to you gene you are having to contend with thoughts like that all the time as you build the larger company? I think it becomes second nature. Um, but it's not that strife is something that I'm constantly comfortable with. I think it's more that you learn how to manage situations where there's always some level of um, discomfort where you're trying to break a barrier, you're trying to make a point, you're trying to be seen as an equal. Um, but you know what, I'm always up for that challenge. I think someone, you know, we need to do that work. But, you know, what I was really excited about working alongside with you is also that um, this is very much a family business. And I think you understand what that's like. Um, I think you also brought uh, so many values of what um, American style looks like. And really, that's Woodard in and of it in a nutshell. And so to have you be working with a company that really is founded on similar ideals. I felt like it was a perfect marriage and um, couldn't, couldn't be more excited that you agreed <laughs> to work with us, so. It was a, the wooing process all of like two, two seconds. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was like, thank God. Pick me, pick me, pick me. <laughs> um, I'm very excited for the launch. I know it has definitely taken a, li a little longer than um, we're accustomed to, but you know, I have, as we've discussed, I really want it to be perfect when it's um, finally ready to be debuted. 
Um, you definitely give me the sense that is your guiding philosophy. A lot of what you do, just you want to get it just right. We do. Perfectionist is part of my name. So, um, and then some people have to tell me what is my, my husband likes to say, we should not let the um, perfect be the enemy of the good. So, I love that expression because it's such a great out. If you <laughs> gotta like, you know, shut it down. Uh, but don't worry, your, we're all about perfection here. So, yeah. what's your husband like? Um, he is very outgoing. He um, is. Uh, how should I describe him? Met mine, but you're yes. a bit off for lunch, or maybe he didn't know we were doing that. No, he was. Um, he didn't know we were. He didn't know he had been invited. <laughs> we had an epic lunch. It was so husband. good. It was so good. So, I think that was the last time I was out in the Hamptons. By the way. Can you believe that? Yeah. It's yeah. been a while. But so. and drove there. Yes, we were a little nuts during the pandemic. Yeah, we well, drove yeah. our electric car there. <laughs> Remember. Um, and how, how old is your daughter now? She's now 11. Wow. How did that How old happen? are your kids? 15, 15, 13. Okay, got it. Yep. Time flies. Uh, Guys, you're in double digits. I know, I know. What does she think about being a Texan? Do you have a Texan accent? She does not. Um, she goes to very proper school. They would not allow that, I don't think. They wouldn't allow a Texas accent from a Texan? I, don't, I, I think it would have been sort of shamed out of her. <laughs> so. Wow. Okay, tough crowd at that school. Tough crowd. Uh, uh, you are uh, unsurprising to anybody listening to you talk about what you do. You're very involved with Kif Bay Dallas, um, yes. which is just going into its third year. Yes. And I'm very excited. We have a great house this year. It's oh. really, it's really great. Yes. The house is, has been secured. So. And how many people are going to be in um, I think that is still being finalized, but we generally try to stick between somewhere between 22 and 25 designers. Um, obviously, it fluctuates based on the layout of the house, how large it is as well. So Nazira, for those of you who don't know, would tell you that it becomes beyond manageable with more than 25 designers. So I believe it. It's like, um, you know, herding cats um, the process in so I participated in the de in the Dallas Gifts Bay last fall and it was very interesting because I had done I hadn't done a, a show house that big outside of town yeah I the Hamptons and I did one that was a, a smaller scale and now but okay we had a, just a huge crowd and a big house. It was a big house as well, yes. And you had, um, you had the primary bedroom, which was no small feat, so. You know how we have gone from calling it the master bedroom to the primary? Yes. I, I call it the main, because okay. that was still right MR on my plans. Oh, that is so smart. I'm gonna have to tell my team that. <laughs> it's the main bedroom. <laughs> the main bedroom because I can't it's like when Benjamin Moore in my 20s or 30s must have been in my 30s changed their numbers yes I lost my mind um, well, you went by the numbers to begin with you do okay that's crazy we always refer to the paint colors by the names um I mean I do sometimes but I'm not like hey where's the pumpernickel sp spice <laughs> But that would be like, hey, I haven't talked to my friend Alex in a long time. Or rather than saying, hey, I haven't talked to 917 such and such in a long time. Um, well, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway. Um, so MB, my gift to you. My, you know, all around like the GBR, the MBR, and nobody knows what we're talking <laughs> about. Um, but it, doing a 
interesting because I met so many uh, uh, fantastic designers from everywhere, but especially from Texas, like really. People. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Do you, I mean, how can somebody, I know how I did it. You know, I, when that we were allowed to go in. Right. Um, you know, picked out then the master bedroom, a uh, main bedroom. So it was pretty, you know, you you ask the bed how much room is left over and then you kind of right. and then we went to stores and immediately got some cakes. But what would you suggest for somebody who wants to be a part of Kips Bay, Dallas isn't in Dallas? So I definitely recommend um, reaching out to one of the chairs. And if you guys are all, if someone's on this um, Instagram live and doing the show house, feel free to email me. Um, you need to get a jump start on who's going to be your boots on the ground or your, um, if, it, if there's any construction, get your trades identified, get them, start the ask at the minute you find out you've been accepted or you know what your room assignment is. And I think plan on being, you know, just arbitrarily go ahead and set dates that you're going to come to Dallas and not without necessarily knowing what um, you're going to accomplish or not accomplish. But I think the more that you're here, the, the better off you're going to ensure that the work's going to get done without there being a fire drill. Now, Alexa, you know, it's always a scramble towards the end, but I think you can, these designers can help themselves out by not, by coming here more often. Um, and getting right now, especially in Texas, good people are hard to come by just because everybody seems to be moving here. And so finding the subs to try and execute whatever is part of the design is going to be um, not impossible, but it will be challenging, so. But the the house has a house kitchen. And I'm sorry, say that again? The, the show house comes with an electrician. And Absolutely, and a plumber, and a plumber. And, and um, you also had, you had, um, maybe I just called you about those people. Um, <laughs> that, that's, that's a huge help to have those people embedded into the process for out right. of town. Now, yeah. I don't want to scare anyone. One thing I will say is that this year's house, and I think last year's house was the same way as well. Um, the house has already been white boxed. So people, designers aren't having to worry about things like, oh my gosh, this floor is awful. Now I got to rip out the floor and I can't install anything until the floors are put back yeah. in. That's going to all be done before people can even come into the space. Yeah, that's huge. That's big. What? I like it. Sounds so, sounds so warm. <laughs> <laughs> Welcoming. <laughs> Decorators, white box. <laughs> so. Impressive. Um, when, when somebody, you know, I, I did not stay in Dallas all the time once it was opened, but it is also very, very good if you do a show house, try and stay there for a nice amount of time. Yes. That is part of the, the point. Um, do you say to people like, you know, come and spend a week here, but come for the first few days and then come back at, you know, like, what do you suggest besides I mean, moving? Yeah, I think if you, the people that I feel like have had the most success in terms of um, visibility, driving business, getting clients, they ended up spending the most time in their spaces, meeting with people walking through the house, um, making contacts. So obviously not everybody can do that just given their location and their schedules. But I would say definitely stay for the first few days because the traffic throughout that house is probably the highest. It will be throughout the duration. Um, and then come back as often as you can. And if you can't um, have somebody identified here in Dallas who can work your space for you, um, somebody who really can represent your brand well for you. And it obviously benefits the Kids Bay Boys and Girls Club. Yes. There is another local that it supports. 
that is two charities crystal charity ball um draw with dignity with dignity yes See, that's why i couldn't think because no. i do <laughs> <laughs> too funny um these are great organizations that are local to dallas Crystal Charity Ball, all of the money it raises goes to support um, organizations trying to help children in need. So it's very um, children-centric. Dwell with Dignity is another important organization that I'm a part of, and it helps families try to get back up on their feet. So we will go and help furnish an apartment for them. I will tell you that the majority of Dwell with Dignity people um, that we are able to help are single parents, single women, women who are working to get their lives back on track. Um, they often have young children and we will, Dual Dignity tries to furnish apartments for them where they can come home and have a safe and um, comfortable space. And hopefully they can spend their energy working on the other parts of their life and not worry about their environment at home. And I think we are true believers in, the, in that we think our surroundings, are, they have a huge effect on our spirit. Absolutely. And come home and have a home. Yes. You can live it. You know, I was um, telling this um, recently too, it's statistically been proven that children will perform so much better in school if they have a stable environment at home. And I don't necessarily just mean the dynamics. They, they know where they're coming home to every single day. Um, and, and you can drill that down even further to like having a desk. Yes. Which I feel I discovered, I mean, it's a mystery, but I discovered how much better my kids felt once they had pioneered where they where they wanted to do their work. Absolutely, yep. Um, so, you know, it seems really simple for most of us, but, you know, for the people um, that Dwell With Dignity tries to serve, these are things that would otherwise be an impossibility. Yeah, so. um, I think it's cool at all. I totally get that, that would be important and worthy of, of uh, you know, what's great about, Kips Bay, the Kips Bay show houses, um, you know, designers rightfully get very excited because it's a wonderful opportunity for them. Yes. It's they a huge honor. Huge so. honor, huge opportunity, tons of exposure. It's also a place to try out things and be a little bold and, and lose sight of the fact that it's actually doing great things for people. Too. Yes, you know? it's a. I mean, I think it's um, a lot of wonderful things combined together, yeah. um, and I have high hopes for this show house this year. So when is it opens? I don't have the exact date yet, but definitely the same week that um, the show house that you were involved in opens. I should know this, but I don't. So. Um, well, at least it'll give me an excuse to go to Dallas and see you. I and hope then, you will, so. I will, because we got business, too. We, we can call this a business trip. As it's well. a work trip. <laughs> I think there's also, I hope Nazir isn't listening or that I'm not giving too much away, but there's also going to be a president's dinner as part of this year's um, show house, which has not happened before. So. Well, that is something away, so I definitely hope it was not a secret. But... um. Yeah, you guys, there there were wonderful events around the show house last year, like amazing, amazing food. Do you say food? Yeah. Amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so so what's 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 the next twelve months look like for you? You know, we're gonna be putting our head down and we're gonna be working a lot. But on some really big and um bucket list type of projects. So it's it's gonna be a lot of work, but you know, I'm gonna be hopefully smiling the whole time. So and and we're gonna basically launch your our collection together later this year. So and it's amazing. I hope so. Yeah, I, I definitely think so. I've seen all the prototypes, you know. Yeah, so. I love how you're 
<laughs> I should say I know so. But um, I, I, so you're a very intimidating person because you do all of these I things. am? No. <laughs> no, I, once you get to know you, but, but yeah, like you're, you're measured and you seem so like, like you got this. And, and it's you fake. Do, you do, well, good. Well, you took a job. It's all fake. So. You have this, these big jobs all over. So I, for anybody out listening with that I love about you and about you, how you do that, is if ever there was a picture we were developing that came out, um, you would, you know, you were just very, um, straightforward and you'd send out a, a, a like a team email and be like okay guys I think I don't know I'm saying this and I'm not myself well it's it's a Thursday but it's a Thursday. Um, I'm there I feel you like watching you do your thing your business you were very decisive and sometimes in a creative world that can be difficult and you mince around worrying about creatives you're you've been very direct very concise and you just managed to keep us all i hope i didn't make anyone cry <laughs> not at all not at all i just felt very i felt very good to in the process and when same when you're when you're creating something and you're stressed like oh my god is this is this good and you have a a a leader who can just be very yes professional Arabella yes, yes. thank you that's the <laughs> word we were looking for <laughs> yeah. people do when they're like at work <laughs> yes but, um, that's uh, the P. but friendly professional effective and a leader I I just um you know this whole time uh, during COVID I've been a lot of time thinking about what makes a leader? And I feel like you're an amazing leader. Oh, thank you, Alexa. <laughs> I, we, you know, every day we try and I, I really want to give you a lot of the credit too. I think you were very clear about what the design intent behind every collection was. So I felt like I could go to bat if I felt like that was on the chopping block for one reason or another. But I also felt like there was a level of um, trust that yeah. we knew what would actually be able to be manufactured on a larger scale successfully and what we could make look good in a prototype but would struggle with um, later on down the road. So it's the benefit of having a collaboration with a company that has existed for years. Yes. I mean, you have letters from people who are like, oh, we have our wood chip. From we do. Yeah. Yeah. We <laughs> We still, every summer, we field um, emails and Facebook messages and phone calls from people who say, I've inherited my grandmother's Woodard. It needs to be, the frames need to be repainted. Can you help us? Or I need new cushions. And, um, you know, from a, from a money standpoint, those are the types of things that don't make us any money because we almost have to stop the production line to do that. But from a reward factor, that, that I love getting those emails because it tells me that, you know, all this time has passed and our product is still part of someone's home. But to, to, to know that you're working with a company that is, you can't, you can't buy that reputation. You just Thank you. It. Yes. We, we, we feel like we're stewards of Woodard and that it is our job to make sure that um, it continues to hold that level of regard, um, at least for, people in the United States. Yeah. yeah. Just for now. <laughs> <laughs> Just for now. For now. For everybody else. Eh, eh whatever. <laughs> um, well, I hold you in such high regard. I tell you all the time, you're my girl crush. Or maybe oh, I thank you. Uh, but I'm a huge fan. Likewise. Oh, the name of the outdoor company is Woodard, but jeans and design practice is called Jean Lou Design and you can follow her here. Thank you. You're on a, you're on a, you're on a roll, lady. And I just try to get up and keep on going on every day, so.
and you're doing it and benefiting the universe. So that's oh, thank hard. you. Yes, we try to. Was it do no harm? Do no harm. Do no harm. Uh, so thank you. I thank can't you. wait. Yes, and timing is perfect. All right. I was so good to get to catch up with you today. So good. To, now I feel now see each other again next week. Yes. We're, we're going to work on that now. So. <laughs> All right. Kisses. All right. And thank you. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye.